What's up, everybody, and welcome to Panels and Pictures, our comic comic book based media podcast. I'm Bobby, and I'm here with Justin. Hello. We're here to talk about uh, the first episode of Loki. Um, just before you all freak out, just so you know, um, first part of the show will be spoiler free. We'll clearly denote where we're going to talk about spoilers. And then we'll move on to our spoiler discussion about the first episode. And then the next time you hear probably Loki about us when, when it's over, we'll, we'll, we'll do yeah. that. We'll, when it's wrapped up, we'll do the same thing with WandaVision and, and um, Falcon the Winter Soldier. So that's what, what's what we'll do. Uh, before we jump into the Loki talk, though, uh, Justin wanted to talk about the comic books he's not reading. For the first time, I'm going to be 38 years old. For the first time since I'll say I was 20... 20 19 i am not buying weekly comic books anymore which is a very hard decision that i've made um but sometimes you, your bank account kind of makes these decisions for you mm -hmm. in a way yes <clears throat> so i've been buying less and less books every week for a few years now just really picking and choosing because they are so freaking expensive um they're up to like i think some of the dc books are up to like 4.99 a comic and it's hard to read everything that I'm interested in. And so I've been slowly just whittling down my pull list to like the absolute necessities. And so what I've been actually doing is like, sometimes it's like, all right, well, I'm reading Daredevil. I'm like into this Daredevil run, but I'm already at, I, I try and limit myself to like between 20 and $25 a week. And then I'd be at like $33 and it's like, well, this Batman I could tell is just like a filler issue before the next arc of whatever starting. So I'll just not read this Batman comic and break, you know, the number run that I've been collecting, mm. which is difficult to do. <clears throat> so I've made a decision to stop doing weeklies and start doing the Marvel Unlimited and the DC Infinite mm -hmm. universe. Mm -hmm. And so... Three months after today's comics, uh, so yesterday was Wednesday, so three months from now, those books will be in Marvel Unlimited. Yeah. And so now I have to wait three months. I'm not sure about DC. I'm not sure about their turnarounds. I don't know how um, that works either. I, I feel like it's got to be close um, because of, you know, if Marvel's three months, you, you would feel like DC would have to be at least close to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is different. I haven't bought comics in three weeks and it is extremely difficult. Of course, Spider-Man is going, it was going into this like huge arc um, where I was like super interested in what's going on. So it's going to be a long three months, but I thought <laughs> I'd talk a little bit about my experience in using those, those programs, um, yeah. those apps, even uh, on the phone, the Marvel limited app is totally great on the web. It is not great uh -huh. at all. Um, <clears throat> I had to actually contact customer service because DC at least has like the DC infinite homepage. And so it'll like, it'll sell you like, this is what's new this week. Uh, here's a spotlight on Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, um, new characters, black label, editor picks, uh, staff picks. And it will be like, you know, here's a bunch of books for them. But if you wanted to, you could just click show me all and then click by character year dates storylines um popularity whatever and then you get to read the books marvel um kind of just takes you to the home page of marvel mm. and so it's like new books this week and then uh, at the very bottom of the book will okay. be a you yeah. and so like cool i'm seeing the books that got released this week but they don't have the you at the bottom so i can't read them and it took me a very long time to figure out how do i just search for story arcs creators because what i was doing was just going to be like all right <laughs> excuse me i want to read darth vader mm -hmm. yeah. um so i would type in darth vader and then it's like here's the character darth vader no, no no that's not what i'm looking for let me look for comics and then it just lists out of order like a whole bunch of comics no series mm -hmm. uh and they weren't it, nothing was saving my spot so i had to like contact them and be like what's going on like am i because every time i would try and log in it would take me to the do you want to purchase marvel unlimited and then at the very bottom it's like oh are you a member click here and i would click there and it would take me to the spot 
and it was just not filling in correctly. So I thought like maybe I'm just I have some weird thing going on where it doesn't recognize because hmm. I was looking for like a very similar homepage to DC, the DC one. Right. They don't have that. So what I had to figure out how to do is you had to like kind of like hover over the button, but not click the comics button. And then it would take you to like, uh, oh, characters, story arcs. Hmm. Um, so the web version is is not great, but the the app version is is fine for searching by like, you know, I want to go by events. And right. so like if I wanted to find. Civil War, I could find that easily, but I'm having like a harder time finding like, let me find all the Avengers comics by Jonathan Hickman in order. So so that, that that's like a little bit rough. I think some of these apps need a little bit more work, but hmm. OK, over the next three months, this will be me trying to figure out how to use these things perfectly. So that way, when I'm on vacation in August, <laughs> I can finally start reading comics again. <laughs> But I mean, you know, what's funny is I've been like going back, like reading some like old stuff. Yeah. I decided to reread Astonishing X-Men by one Josh Whedon. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I happen to like that story a lot, but I haven't read it in a few years. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to just go back and be like, how does this thing hold up a couple of years? You know, 10. God, how long has it been? I think that was like 2004. It's a long time ago. It's a long time. So, yeah. Yeah. That book doesn't hold up as well as you probably would think. <laughs> I, I I read it probably like eight or nine years ago. No, you know, eight, five, five or six years ago. Eight or nine years. Five or six years ago, I read it. Um, and like I thought it was good, but I didn't like love it. You know, I didn't. I I I still like the story. I still like the beat. Some of the beats of that story, mm -hmm. but it doesn't like. I think the overall arc and like the the page to page writing doesn't hold up as well. Yeah. Um. I, I, I'll just say it doesn't hold up now under the microscope, especially with everything going on around Whedon. Yeah. Um, some other things that I've just, I read that I wanted to like point out. I read, I reread all of Snyder's Batman, which. Very still, good. Still great. Um, yeah. I read some like old Spider-Man comics and things like that. So for the next couple of months, it's going to be me just going back and rereading things um, that I've, you know, read or missed over the last God knows how long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love, yeah, so, man, reading Snyder's Batman again sounds like a good time. Yeah, it sounds like a good was, thing. Uh, read a, it was funny. Like, I read a little bit before that. Like, I read a little bit of Batman R.I.P. Um, mm -hmm. And some, like, you know, Batman and Son, like, th all the books that were, like, leading up to that. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to read all of Snyder's Batman again. And I was like, oh, that's right. This was absolutely fantastic. I was, I was like, on Twitter, and somebody put up a picture, uh, like, a screenshot of, like, like the from Batman Zero Year, the guy with like the flower or whatever, which I can't remember his name Mr. right now. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Bloom. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> like That's when Jim Gordon was Batman. Yeah, I totally fucking forgot about this. You know? Um, it was good stuff. Yeah. I mean, and it's not much. Like, I'm paying $17 a month for both DC and Marvel. It's probably a lot less and than so you were spending on comics in a month. I was probably spending, I'll say, at least 15 to $20 a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. so it's cheaper. It'll it'll save me money. And so I'm going to fill in some of the stuff that I just haven't read. And like, yeah, any makes of the sense. Star Wars comics over the last eight years. Right, right. Makes sense. <laughs> um, well, that's enough about them paper, them paper books. Uh, let's talk about. Let's talk. Uh, Adam says, read the Lando comic. Um, I'll do. Uh, let's talk about Loki, the yeah. newest Marvel Cinematic Universe television program on Disney+. Plus. Uh, they released episode one on Wednesday. It's on Wednesdays now. I, Which is great for me. I informed former Talking Comics host Stephanie Cook of this the other day. She was like, I didn't realize it was coming out today. I was waiting for it to come out on Friday. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's great that actually it's on a Wednesday. It's much easier for me to watch it in like a timely fashion um, on Wednesdays. Um, so it was released, um, and, uh, I just want to get like, you know, so I, no, no, the end of obviously, uh, in end game, uh, Loki gets the cosmic cube and sort of like dashes off, um, and kind of splinters off, uh, from the, the, the known timeline from the 2012 first Avengers movie. Um, and this is what happened to him after he disappeared. Basically he gets apprehended by the TVA, the time variance authority. Um, and he is kind of having to face like. The fact that he is um, uh, what they call a variant, like he doesn't, he's out of time, he's breaking the rules, um, and you know, we, we he's coming to grips with that, and that's what this first episode is about. And I mean, we'll see what the rest of the story is about, but I just want to get 
before we get into like the the ins and outs of the episode um what do you think of it overall justin i thought it was fantastic hmm. i i think it's the best pilot they've done mm -hmm. um and it wouldn't shock me if this it will be my favorite series yet mm -hmm. um yeah i'm i'm right there with you I, you know i think that um we, we we spoke about obviously we've got we've talked in length about both the previous shows and i think that like wanda vision felt like a television show because in fact its first episodes were structured like television shows um for their like for like their weird bizarre theme um and we talked about how falcon Winter soldier felt more like a six-hour movie like you know carved up into into episodes this is the first truly one that i feel like like you like feels like the first episode of a tv show that could go on for however long you know what i mean Be you know it, yeah. it, it has a it, it introduces its central premise and characters right away it sets, up, it, it sets up its dynamics right away it sets up its character struggle right away it kind of leaves it open to let's go forward now with these characters and you know go on sort of like um these adventures and it also sets up the ability to do like honestly like if they wanted to do 40 episodes where it's just like variant of the week they could do it based on what the structure of the show is i don't think that's what the show is going to be obviously but i think no. but they've set up a way that they can do repeatable as part of doing a television show is like right is being able to set up like we could do this every week you know and, and you know this one is the first one that feels like it's sort of made to be that you know um and, and i agree with you i think it's fantastic um i think the the production like design is really great uh, he walks in this one room where he has kind of like um, sent this line, stick a ticket, send this line, and it has like all of these like l like lamps, mm. like these like ceiling lamps. Like it has, you know, it has like I don't know, like a hundred hundred ceiling lamps in it in a room that probably would need five, and they're all like kind of too low, and they got these like these the orange bulbs in them, and it just gives off like this like this sense of like this place is a kind of quirky but also like kind of bureaucratic and weird and adam just said it reminded him of control and that is like a great comparison I honestly was just thinking it that is a great comparison comment. a great comparison it has totally has those kind of control vibes like utilitarian and bureaucratic but also weird and not right you know what i mean at the same time and it does that great um and i think also the music is fucking amazing in it. <laughs> like the, the music is great. And the opening theme is great. And all of the score in it is just, man, is really wonderful. There, there's an attention to detail in this show that I don't want to say is lacking in the other shows because it's not what that shows, those shows are about. Yeah, I know. But like, if you take a look at the end credits, you know, the end credits for WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we're both great. Like they, they, they have like a, you know, a neat little motif going. Mm -hmm. They're doing things. Um, you know, d each show is doing something different. The attention to detail and how long the Loki credits were. Yeah, I was astonished. I'm like, this is going on for a while, but I can't take my eyes off the screen because <laughs> everything, every other clip that they're showing you about this building, right, was just fascinating. It was like in control, like Adam said. Like you pick up every piece of paper because you just want to learn more about this place. Yeah, and totally. That's how I, I felt about the TVA is this is we'll get into this but like this is a special place that marvel hasn't shown before yeah that has some serious power and significance yes but um, it looks like an office building from the 70s yes exactly and that's the thing about it too which i think is so cool right is that you know wandavision is intentionally obfuscating that the world you're in right it's it's holding it back hmm. from you on purpose, right? It's it doesn't want it wants you to be confused. It doesn't want you to know what's going on. Falcon Winter Soldier is a world that we know very very well, right? It's just it's the Marvel universe. This is the first time they've had like a new different setting where they're actually they actually want the the audience to understand what it is and what's going on with it, right? Like there's still some mystery. There's definitely mystery going on, right? But it, it is meant to be like, you're supposed to understand what this place is. It, it's not, you're not supposed to be confused about this place. Is. And I think one of the reasons of, of that, of one of the great things about this episode is that Loki is us in this moment, right? He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't understand where he is, why he's there and who these people are. And so they have to explain it to him. And so it feels natural, right? It feels natural and, and, and sort of like, 
organic of, of why we're getting exposition and stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, like, you got to give a ton of credit to the production designer or something like that. The director, uh, it was Kate Heron. Um, she, uh, did this episode director, that was that show Sex Education. Um, she made, uh, an episode of the show called Daybreak. She's done just TV before, but this, the, like, the direction of this episode is so tight and so assured and, and, and so well done. Like, it has such a style to it. Um, and you know, you never know, you know, part of the thing with Marvel, right. Is that you just don't, you never know what things are going to look like, right. Because either you're going to get like the, like kind of like Marvel house style, or you're going to get something, um, different. They do different, different stuff. And this is one of the times where they're doing something different. Um, it also subverted my expectations twice. Yes. Which absolutely when we get into the spoiler talk. Um, yeah. You know, there were things that I thought like, okay, this is going to happen. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, yeah. it's not. Uh, yeah. So like I constantly had no idea what was coming next. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big shout out before we get into spoilers, a big shout out. And we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll talk more about the performances when we get into spoilers because we want to talk about details, but uh, Hiddleston is great. Like, you know, uh, he's always been great, but there's always a chance. Like the, the, the Loki line is very fine. You know what I mean? Like the, it, 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 you are, you are one step away from being like, um, mustache twirling, you know, yeah. you know, hamming one step from camp. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he rides that sort of camp to realistic line. Excellently, you know, especially cause this isn't Loki from Thor Ragnarok, right? This is Loki from the first Avengers movie who is like full on bad dude. You know, there is no, like we, we have not like entered like gray area Loki yet from like a, from a movie perspective. Um, so he has to play like that version of the character. Um, uh, and man, Owen Wilson is fucking fantastic. <laughs> he is so, wow. wow. He is so good because he is, it, what, what so many, I think what, 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 what so many great comedians or even actors do when they have a very set personality that people know extremely well is he's just sort of like he's doing Owen Wilson, but he's sort of like flipping it a little, right? He's kind of turning that like quirk a little bit more subdued. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 he's still got the quirk, but it, he's subduing it a little more. There, there there is like more depth and sort of like responsibility and sadness to like this sort of like quirky Owen Wilson character than you see in a lot of Owen Wilson roles. Um, and he plays off Hiddleston so well. They play so well together because they're so different, right? Like Hiddleston is like this, like, su like in real life, the super trained British thespian, you know, and Owen Wilson is this like, I'm just like, I'm this comedian, you know, that this, like this, like this, just this guy, you know, I, um, and they play so well off each other, uh, that, that it, it really is wonderful. Um, and we don't see a ton of them, but like, um, uh, Woonmi Mas Masaka, who plays like the, um, she's just credited as Hunter B-15, but she's like the main, like Hunter, the one that captures Loki is real yeah. good in this. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Gugu Mabatha Raw, who plays like the judge or whatever. Um, and it is also great. She's great in a lot of stuff, but she's, she's great in this and big shout out to Eugene Cordero as the like desk clerk dude um who uh who has to like process loki when he first comes in or whatever um he was in um the good place and he's fantastic in that uh and he's very funny in this as well um and uh yeah so and it's written by sorry i didn't know talking about chat michael waldron is the is the head writer of of the show um and michael waldron it wrote on rick and morty <laughs> um so yeah so, um, so yeah, that, that's like basic, like overview thoughts. We're going to get into spoilers now. So if you don't hear spoilers about Loki episode one, hop out. Um, but we're going to talk more in depth. Overall, it's great though. If you're, it, it, I'm sure there's no reason for you not to watch it, but if you're wondering how, how it is, it's, it's great so far. The first episode is great. Um, so we're going to talk about spoilers now. Uh, do you want to start with the big reveal at the end or you want to, you want to start a little earlier? Start from the beginning. Okay. So, so why don't you why don't you start out, Justin? Uh, so yeah, I mean, 
literally starts from that moment in end game where yeah. you know uh they, they they capture him and they're putting him in the elevator and it starts in the elevator and i think it's just so funny that they keep going back to these scenes but adding new context to them yeah. because we don't see loki waving at the hulk uh -huh. in that in that elevator scene yeah um and then, okay, so yeah, he takes a Tesseract and he disappears and he ends up in Mongolia. And then he sees people and immediately gets up into his, like, jumps up on top of a rock and is mm. like, worship me. And they're yeah. speaking a different language. Yeah. TVA shows up to take him and he's like, hang on one second. He goes to talk to the TVA. <laughs> TVA handles him with no issues. And then from there, we get, like, Strange Man in a, in a you know. Um, stranger in a Strange Land. Stranger, yeah, Stranger in a Strange Land. Where Loki does not believe that anything that that's happening to him really has any uh, is, of, any, of any consequence he's never heard of the tva so why should a god be concerned yeah he quickly learns that he has to be concerned because he's seeing people just erased from existence in front of him yeah in just funny ways yeah um but it's like at the same time like it's like not this version of loki that we're we've been hanging out with in the last couple of movies no. it's this like earlier aggressive version of loki mm -hmm um you know he's he's like jumping from like this is fine as guardian leather to like all the clothes being melted off him and he's buck ass naked just hang on a second yeah he drops down to have to sign everything that he's ever said he gets processed in front of a judge who finds him guilty like i, I thought it was great that they showed these this little cartoon that they made yeah about like what is a variant yeah and, like if my dad was to ever watch this show he would have no idea what's going on and they they make this beautiful 1950s style cartoon that explains like you found yourself out of the natural flow of time yeah so i think the first time they've ever actually really hand like said the words multiverse mm -hmm. well they said in, it in they said it in in spider-man spider-man yeah they said it in spider-man um but this they actually talked about there being a real multiverse yeah uh, and there was a war and only one got to survive yeah and so this is the main timeline, the sacred timeline. Yeah. They talk and, about the timekeepers. Yep. Um, and the TBA's job is to take people who have unexpectedly found themselves outside the timeline by accident or by design mm -hmm. and to correct them. Yeah. And there was a word they used. They used reset and they used a different word. Yeah. Um, and I think the other word was basically we're going to erase them from existence. Yeah. Yeah. You notice the timekeepers, uh, the, they show that animation of them. They look yeah. an awful lot like a character that I think is going to be very big in the Marvel Universe coming, oh, maybe an Ant-Man on Mania. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that, in a, we'll get to that <laughs> at the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, Owen Wilson saves Loki from being processed. Yeah. First, and... we get this crazy. We didn't talk. We, uh, that, that, that scene where they're like in France in whatever year it is or whatever, and he's like yeah, in the yeah, church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um and where they're kind of they're, we find out that there's this variant right and i didn't want to talk about any of this before we talk about spoilers because i don't want anybody it's fun to discover this stuff like when you're watching the show there's this variant going around killing people and there's gonna give you a couple hints in this uh, there's there's stab wounds people didn't know what hit them um and he this little girl is in the church and you know he, he he talks to her and sort of gets like a story out of her or whatever and it's like a very subdued but like there's like there's like a, a very good like i don't know tone and and sort of vibe to the scene with him with that little girl and him sort of like you get the, the like the mystery thing like immediately right away which is yeah. great which i loved it's like no these like he's like a detective like he's he, that could have been a scene where it was a cop a, a, you know like a detective at a crime scene you know in in new york doing whatever um but but it was like in france in the whatever the 1700s or whatever um i do think it's funny this show was filmed before the other shows right came out so this is not the case but like when she points to that he asks like who did this and he she points to that picture of the death like that painting of the devil on the river i was like is this like a is this is a troll <laughs> do they know people every are show every show they really <laughs> all, all the fans are like it's mephesto it's yeah. mephesto i'm like when the fuck did mephesto get so popular <laughs> like even in the comics right now he's like pulling the strings on certain things uh -huh, and it's yeah. just like why did the devil get so popular <laughs> And of course, it's not him. We, and and we can, no. you can totally understand why she would point to that thing, though, once we find out the, the actual thing. And I don't know why we're holding it back because we just spoiled it, but it's just funner to like kind of put it on order. So like yeah. basically like, you know, um, uh, Owen Wilson's character is like, you know, OK, we got to go because the timeline is forking too far. You, you, there's there's some sort of like 
they have these they and you know they have these like meters or whatever that are like showing them like how bad the timeline is getting like how much it's forking um and there's like a red line that that that, that it gets hit something happens which i'm guessing is the multiverse sort of like that's the point of no return you can't erase the timeline once it gets past that point or whatever is is my assumption and i i'm assuming we'll get there at some point during this season right um yeah. hold on Come here. Thank you. Um uh so um uh so it, the, the, where the point of return so I'm, which I'm assuming we will see you know when, when uh, as we get farther into the season and then he kind of gets this folder and he's like oh it's Loki and he goes to um he goes to back to the very and he saves him like you said um and they're like I don't know like you don't know I don't think you want to do this yeah, and uh, so the, he 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 saves Loki from being processed, and then it's a lot of Owen Wilson opening Loki's eyes to where he is, and so I, at some point Loki tries to use his powers, and then he realizes yeah. there's no magic here. Yeah, I'm like why are my powers not working? And then they they go outside, and they're walking like the outside part of this building, and yeah. you see in the distance it's just this incredible city with flying cars and. Mm. Loki says to uh, Owen Wilson's character, I thought there was no magic here. And so he goes, there isn't. Yeah. And like, I, I just had this like moment when I was watching, like, again, like we've seen time travel, we've seen space or whatever, but like, here's just like another thing. Like it made me think like, man, way back in 2009 when yeah. Iron Man came out, I never thought we would get to this place that exists outside of time yeah. with these characters and this incredible city and stuff. And it was just yeah. like, man we're living in we're living at the right time right now <laughs> yeah um, absolutely where, like you and i can still like look back and appreciate this stuff it was like whoever thought we would get here yeah then i think it comes down to like w I, the dynamic between owen wilson and tom hiddleston is going to be what drives this show yeah um because they're sitting down and owen wilson is basically prodding yeah um loki like I wonder why you do the things you do. Yeah. Like, tell me what's going on. Like, and it, this is the, this is the like the main gist of this episode is why does Loki do what he does? Why? What's the point? Like, yeah. right. Well, what's owed to you? So they start at this line. Like, well, what were you trying to do? I'm trying to be king of Midgard. Okay, but then what? Yeah. Like, what then? Like, what was your next move after that? And so then Loki goes on about taking away people's freedom because freedom is actually like the worst thing that you could give people. It, mm -hmm. it ruins their lives if they feel like they have to make choices. <clears throat> and then this is just some snappy dialogue going yeah. back and forth between the two of them. And then, of course, things they, they, they start showing. Here's where the here's where the episode subverts my expectations. Loki is shown his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the main Loki's life. Yeah. Like, okay, this is what should have happened to you. You get captured. I know I, I must be moving around. It's um, okay. Uh, and you get captured, and this is what happened next. And we'll show him like what happens in um what was it the second the dark world, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, your, dark world. Your mother dies in the dark world. And it's your fault. And it's and it's your fault, and yeah. it stops there. Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, okay, Loki's not going to see what he actually becomes in this episode. Yeah. It's going to be a later thing. And mm -hmm. then, of course, a bunch of hijinks ensue. Loki escapes from this room, and he's plotting his escape. And this is where the big picture comes into play here. Yeah. Is he goes, he finds some poor guy working in a cubicle, and he's like, I want the Tesseract. And the guy has the ability to get the Tesseract. And look, he's looking down. He's like, are those infinity stones? And he's like, yeah, like we just use these things as paperweight here, yeah. like paperweights. And in that moment, look, he's like, oh, like the Tesseract and the infinity stones are meaningless here. Yeah. Like I have reached a level of power that I did not know existed. Yeah. And he then goes back. He gets into a conflict with, uh, as we mentioned before, the main guard that's chasing him around. And he then where I didn't think what was going to happen, he then watches the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't think that we were going to get there. And he sees the, the, uh, the good moments like Thor, um, him and Thor there when Odin disappears and mm -hmm. Thor and him having like a, a good, a good couple of moments. And then he sees his, the end of his life at, at Thanos's hands. Yeah. 
and <clears throat> I don't know if it was I, I, I didn't expect the more subdued version of Loki to come out in the way that it did in this episode mm -hmm. but Owen Wilson kept asking him like do you like hurting people yeah like do you like it and I didn't expect to get the answer that we got where he's like no I don't like hurting people but he recalls a line that he used earlier in the episode when it was just like, sometimes it's the lie, the weak tell yeah. to inspire fear. Yeah. And he's talking about himself. And I was like, well, I did not expect this self-reflection to come this soon. Yeah. But I guess seeing your life play out in front of your eyes and then realizing that you are utterly insignificant. Yeah. Um, might have a way of changing even the most stubborn of minds. Yeah. I mean, because Loki's whole thing, right, it is... Um, and the name of the episode, right, is Glorious Purpose, right? He he has always thought of himself as, um, he has always thought of himself as being owed more and being owed, being owed this important, you know, this importance. Like he he is important, and he's gonna have a he's gonna have the the title and role hmm. of someone who is important. And then this place gives him the perspective that even if he got that, he really wouldn't be that important. You know, and I think part of that, is that, that that breaks it down. And I think obviously also like seeing everything that would happen to him in his life. It breaks it breaks down like. What's the point of me? Like he said, it's, it's part of the act, right? He says that right? It, it's part of yeah. the character. It's part of the Loki character. And what's so fascinating about this, Sim saying that is that people who read the comics, that's a big part of the like um, the kid Loki, you know, teen Loki storylines that were written was like, like, am I just supposed to be, am I, am I bad? Cause I'm just supposed to be bad. You know, is that like who, like, you know, is that my, just my place? Like I have to do this stuff as part of like the character of Loki basically to fill my role. Um, and, and I think it's, you know, they brought that up so early. Um, and we got I a, mean, we got a question in our discord about this whole part, which was Greg asked us, um, has the show started to change your perspective on Loki as a character? And what is your opinion about the inclusion of the TVA and change of stakes regarding power levels, i.e. I, I, Infinity Stones? Um, I mean, I don't think... I mean, it Sorry, Justin, you go first. Uh, I was just going to bring up one more, yeah. one quick other point. Yeah, do it. Um, two things that I think really helped it cement it for Loki is when he was talking about king of being king of Midgard, Owen Wilson's like, what about space? Why don't you be king of space? Mm -hmm. Like that's big. It's vast. But also yeah. I think that was just to show him, um, that even if you were king of space, yeah, you know, this is beyond that. Yeah. And then there's a scene where they show Loki failing a lot. Yeah. And Owen Wilson says to him, like your job is to make other people, the best versions of themselves yes yeah. yep and then he sees like the avengers rise and he sees thor mm, yeah. and like and like i think like it, i mean like adam said it's a lot of growth in a short amount of time but it's almost believable because you see everything that's happening to you and you realize how utterly insignificant you are especially with these the like the varying levels of power being thrown around right now that it would be easy i think to just feel humbled in a way that you probably never imagined himself feeling. Right. And it's also, it's also easier because we know this is already in Loki, right? Because we've yeah. seen what happens to Loki and even, even Thor one Loki, there, there, there is, uh, you know, there is like a, he's not, an, he's not an outright villain. No, no, there, there is, uh, there's conflict inside of him about what he wants to do. He feels betrayed. He feels angry. He feels, all of those things and he does bad things, but he's not like a, you know, he's not a, he's not a mustache twirling super villain there. Right. Yeah. So, and Hilson has always played him that way. So it, it, you, you get, you, you kind of see that the way, the way that it, it develops there. Also Hilson is just like really amazing in th this particular scene. Like he, he sells it completely. Like the look on his face, the, the way he reacts to things, the, you know, it, all that stuff, the, 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 the performance here is, is really, really good. Um, you know, and, you know, uh, I, I do love when he is, you know, well, they're God of mischief. And he like goes through all the things. He goes, this doesn't look mischievous to me, you know, whatever. And he go, and he, you know, and then he, when, when he gets away, he's like mischievous little scamp. Or yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that was a good impression. <laughs> I liked that. Um, you know, and then like, 
and, and then you re then you find out like you find out why Owen Wilson's character has been Oh yeah, what's a fish was very funny. <laughs> How do you know what a, fe- know what a fish is? <laughs> um uh, my whole life behind this desk. <laughs> he goes, yeah, but you still should know what a fish. Um uh well, the other part of Greg's question before we get to this next part is the stakes regarding the Infinity Stones, the power levels. I think it's super important, not just for Loki, but for the audience watching, right? To understand that the shit that was important in the last run of Marvel movies is no longer important, right? The Infinity Stones don't mean anything anymore. They're gone. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. They're done. They're dusted. You don't have to worry about that anymore. This is not... The person with the Tesseract doesn't have a win button in, in this next phase of Marvel movies, right? And I yeah. think that is, like, important. Smart. smart and important because they've got to leave it behind. They've got to, they've got to go to the new threats, right? They've got to go to new things. Um, and, you know, I, I think that that's really important. So I think that's one of the reasons why they do it as well. Um, so anyway, we find, out, we find out the reason, right? Why, why he... Why Owen Wilson's character wants to know the answer to this question that he's been asking, you know, because it's not really about like making Loki self-actualize, right? It is not really what it's about. It's Owen Wilson wants to know, Mobius wants to know because the variant that he needs help hunting is Loki. Um, and I was like, I went like this. I went like, oh shit, like that, like when... You know, because my, my my brain was going like, who's the variant? Or my brain was going right, like, like wh- what? Who is it? What is it? You know, what what has horns? What uses? What stabs things? You know, I was trying to like think about that stuff. You know, um, and I, I'm not gonna lie, my first thought when they were going over that like area was like Wolverine. That was my first thought, um, because like the stab wounds are are you know are the same. They don't know what hit them. You know, all that kind of stuff. And that's the first thing I thought. Um, I'm glad that it's not that, but that was like the fir- one of the first things I thought. Um, so we find out that it's a Loki variant, right? But the way we find out, uh, so he says it's a Loki variant, yeah. and then we get, we get cut to somewhere, what was it, in the 1700s, 1800s? Something 1800s, I think it was 1800s. Um, outside of uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, and... There is a staff in the ground and they like they measure the staff and they're like, oh, this is this is from the third millennia. Yeah. Well, gee. What ha- where, who's a character that exists a couple <laughs> of thousand years from now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hi, Kang. Yeah. Um, and uh, we then see the variant or what we'd assume to be the variant Loki, you know, kill all these TVA agents. Right. So here's a question for you. Is Tom Hiddleston playing both versions of Loki? Um, I don't think so. Do you think? I think that Loki, Loki is a is female. A... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we'll get female Loki. That's what I think. Uh, I think female Loki is, is who that um, is. So my my uh, my guess. This is just my guess. Is that this variant Loki is a um a stowaway from a previous the previous multi one of the previous multiverses mm-hmm. that's my guess yeah that they've been jumping around in this like they somehow escaped the fate of all the of all the timelines merging into one and they're just going around murdering people right. in this one and this loki's job has to hunt it down because it wouldn't make sense if it was a, if it was tom hiddleston's loki from when unless it's a future version of himself and like well, yeah, but even that yeah, doesn't make sense. but they also said like you know there there is like a bunch of I mean there's a ton of Loki time where we don't haven't seen him right like there were he's thousands of years old you know so there could have been plenty of times where he was doing like he did something and we don't know it existed because the time variant the time variants get destroyed right you know what I mean but I do agree with you I think it's from the future I think like you said there's a third millennia piece of technology there. Um, you know, there's obviously something like going on, um, in, in that, in, in that place. And, and, and I think Kang is definitely, I mean, we already know Kang is coming. So it, it just makes sense. This is a time travel thing. Um, all of that, all of that fence. They had said that, um, uh, Loki is going to play massive ramifications yes. for where the movies are going more yeah. than the other shows. Yeah. So well, the writer of this wrote multiverse of madness. 
the same writer. So I, I think you're definitely okay. going to see some stuff. Um, I don't think Kang shows up at the end of the show. No, I, I think that, I think that no, they, gonna, I think they're holding, they're holding Kang back for a while. Is my guess. Yeah. And I also think that I think with these shows, what we've seen right in WandaVision and we've seen in, um, in, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, I don't think they don't want these shows to be about who is the big cameo at the end of the show, right? That's not what they want to do. Um, uh, they want to tell the story that the shows are going to tell and their hooks are always going to go into other places. because It's Marvel stuff. They have to, but I would not, I, I, I think, I, and again, I, I would, if, if it happens, I'll be pleasantly surprised and I'll be happy to see it happen. But I think if you're thinking at all that, oh, are they going to introduce this new big villain here? Or are they going to introduce this whole group of here? Or are they going to do this? They can do that. If it doesn't like, if it doesn't fit with the jive, with the main sort of like pace of the story that they're telling, I think the answer is going to be no to all of those things. Cause it's just going to take away from whatever the story of Loki is going to be. Um, I wonder if we see more than one variant Loki is my question. Um, my, all, the, the thing I also am wondering, here, no, I'm wondering, but here's my theory, Justin. Here's my theory mm -hmm. for end of this show. Okay. Um, Loki does what he's going to do. He we, we, uh, theoretically stops the v Loki variant, whatever, saves the day, helps them out. Finally, like fulfills his glorious purpose, which is not what he thought it was going to be, but you know, that, and then to thank him, they let him, they give him a second chance at his life and let him re-enter the main timeline, but just as Loki, but not really as Loki, um, which would give us young Avenger, kid Loki, teen Loki. I don't know what they would do, but that's sort of the story of that kid. It's, it's still kind of different, but that's sort of the point of that young Loki in the comics as well. Is there sort of like a do over for Loki? The like, button. yeah, you saved the world. Like now you get a second chance. Um, that's my guess. That is my guess on how like we get Loki gets back into the universe. Um, but it's not like Tom Hiddleston, this Loki, you know, work. Yeah. That's my guess. That's just a wild guess. That's just my like wild guess at this point. Um, after seeing the kind of like the arc and like sort of like themes they set up for Loki in this first episode, um, which seemed to be kind of like about that kind of questioning, like what his purpose is and why he's doing what he's doing. And was he always wrong headed? Um, you know, that would, that that's kind of like where, where I'm at in, in, in my brain with it. Um, but I'm look, really looking forward to just watching it week to week, you know, and just like taking this in. Cause it, it like the, the sort of pitch of the show and well, the idea of it is, is, is the one that I think clicks the most with like my like sensibilities for these kind of stories and stuff, you know, this sort of like weird mystery quirky mystery thing is kind of like my jam so it's like that is is fun for me um i wonder how long it is till we see because like, the thing is i think if it was the tom hiddleston loki we would have seen him in that scene because there's I no agree. reason to ho hold him back there's no reason to hide his face if it's just tom hiddleston it's what made me instantly think that you know it's not that our version of loki you know um and the, yeah, the question is like you know why is Loki doing what they're doing right in, in the, in the, in these scenes where he's killing these people? Like, why, like, why is he in France at the time he's in France? Why is he in Oklahoma at the time he's in Oklahoma? There's going to be a reason for these things. It can't just yeah. be random. You know what I mean? So there's gotta be a reasoning for it. Um, you know, we're going to get some sort of like nod to whatever's behind it. Um, but cause maybe in a different like fork of reality, Loki doesn't fall in with, Thanos, when he falls with that pit, he falls in with Kang. You know what I mean? So, like, I think there's, like, an interesting, like, uh, places they can go with that. Um, uh, I'm very excited for, for the series. Me too. Me too. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about it more once it wraps up. We'll have, we'll have a nice long conversation about it. Um, but that's going to do it for the comic book show this week. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Bobby Shortle. Justin? Justin underscore says underscore hey. Um, and yeah, we'll be back. We, we check out our, check out uh, twitch.tv slash misadventureland. Make sure you follow our, the, me on Twitter. You'll see, you know, we're, we, we have a bunch of live streams and shows going on this week because we're, we're talking over E3. So check those out. Um, but until next time, thank you, Justin. 
Thank you, Bobby. And thank you to everybody who's watching and listening. Until next time, be good to one another. Later. Bye-bye.